Okay, hi there, I'm back again. Short demo, PowerShell remake video. Uh, this time on how I deploy uh, virtual machines at home. And perhaps uh, I can't really resize this, I think, otherwise it comes unreadable. So I need to scroll a little bit. We have some input uh, parameters. I already showed that in the other video network label, salt master, some storage parameters and such. That is for more for demo purposes. I'm gonna uh, execute the script actually. Let's see if I have the correct PowerShell version because this script doesn't run in PowerShell 7 because it uses, uh, yeah, that's five, that's fine. Because it's using some SSH stuff under the hood. And uh, I am going to press the debugger there. I'm going to explain the script also a little bit again. Not in too much detail. New VM name, this guy. We need to provide that now here. So I call it Testo1 for now. And the operating system will be uh, sent OS 7. Doesn't matter, I have a lot of others as well. I uh, install it on my hypervisor too. And now we are in the in the switch block and the switch statement check the input and we gave us input CentOS. Just let's see, 20, so false, 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 false. CentOS should be true and it is. And then we set some variables. Those are all needed to deploy the system, right? Then we continue, those are all false of course, Red Hat as well. Then we flush the DNS, we set some, some stuff, log file, uh, doing some stuff here. We protecting some client credentials. Those are uh, protected with the certificate. I'll show that a little bit. So here, for instance, you have the domain credentials. You see those are encrypted. Those are uh, now in, uh, uh, in memory. And we create some credentials for that. You see some credential objects. We need those to reach out to the some Linux boxes, for instance. Uh, the CentOS box itself we're deploying now. We need to set the IP address and such and the system name. And uh, uh, for the other Linux box, that's the salt master. We need to approve the key there. So we import some modules. We set like the disk for the system. We're using an ISO file or not. We're doing some statements here on the, if we use an ISO file, if we do that, we remotely reach out to the hypervisor and copy the VHDK. So light the, the image over. It shouldn't take that long. It's not needed to pause, I think, still. I'll pause it a little bit. And now we can see how long that actually took, 21 seconds. And now we create the new VM based on a module, by the way. I show that in a second. Uh, if you go here, you have like a, in the same script folder, you have like a helpers module. And inside of those helpers module, you have functions. I go back, by the way, here. You have functions, new MRB VM, for instance, you see that accepts some input as well. You see new VM name, hypervisor, memory, generation as such, network label. And we just created that here. So this uh, command let comes from that helper function. Okay. And this at MRB disk is the same. That is also here, right? That's a function, you see, that accepts some input. And based on that, it does some magic to uh, create a new disk for you. We continue, F10. So the disk now being created in the back. We are changing the CPU count of the VM. If it's an ISO file, we mount the ISO. We mount an ISO file, but it's not a, it's a, not a ISO based installation. Uh, it is Linux, so we switch off secure boot. That's not supported. Here, so we set the boot order for the VM, so that the hard disk is the first boot device. Uh, it's not Windows, so this will be evaluated to false. You see, if I hover on this target OS, you will see that it is Linux, not Windows. So this if statement will never evaluate to true. So it will never come in this block. So this will be skipped. You see? So, and now we invoke a command uh, to add it to the cluster. And I'll show you that. So here I have my cluster manager with all my virtual machines. And currently I don't have a test uh, all one machine. Uh, yes, exactly. So now we go back here and we do, uh, I will zoom it by the way, one second. See, I don't have any test one VM here, right? Go back. Now we invoke this command. Now it's added to the cluster in a second. That's executing now. So if we go back now to the, you see, there's something happening there. So if we go back to the cluster manager, we now have a test one here. Notice that it is switched off. See, it's off. Test on one. Go back to the script. We continue. Now we start the VM. You will see that here, right? It's now in a running state. Oh, 
I didn't meant to do that. Yes, come back. Now we connect to that guy. So we connect to the, you see, that's automatically opening the, the VM console, right? The console session to the, to the VM. It's not needed. We don't need to log in, of course, because everything is automated. So we go back to the script. Now we get the VM information. We get the MAC address for the VM. We need that. And we've got the MAC address now in memory. And uh, with that MAC address, we're going to see if there's a lease on the DHCP server. I have a DHCP server running, and I can check if that guy got a lease. And I need that uh, IP address to stick that into DNS, for instance. That's one of the next steps. So we check if it has a valid DHCP lease. And it will take some time, of course. It's reaching out remotely to another system using different credentials. You see, it's using here domain credentials. It's reaching out to this remote server. And now we have some result. You see, we have a result. And if we check the result here, we see that we have a, a IP address probably. Yeah, dot .IP address, dot .IP address. You see, so we have now this IP address we got gotten that for DHCP, so we can continue. And this while loop is constructed, if this is false, so if it's null, then we loop until it gets a lease. Because for Windows, it takes a little bit long enough for Linux, uh, for instance, and then uh, uh, this while loop is just to wait until the system gets a lease from DHCP. Otherwise, you can't continue. You know, you have no IP address. So we continue, and this will be false, of course, because it's not null. Now we get the IP address. Like I showed you, we have that now nicely in memory, you see, nicely stored in memory. Then we check if the target OS is, is Windows, and it's not, so that won't execute. This will be executed because it now also not, you see. And now we add it to DNS, so again, we're reaching out remotely, and I'll show you if I now do a ping uh, test01, right? We call it test01. See, it takes some time can't resolve and .home.local because that will be the full qualified domain and you see not found. Now we execute this remote remotely on a DNS server. So we added a record there for the system. And uh, let me flush my DNS first because otherwise, uh, yes. Now let's see if we now ping the system. You see, we can ping it. So it has been added to DNS successfully. So we can continue because one of the next steps is SSHing remotely to that newly deployed system and running some bash commands there. And uh, we need a uh, computer name for that, of course, in DNS to connect to the guy. So uh, now we sleep a little bit. Okay, I'm done sleeping. Now we're setting up a session first to the remote server, to this guy, right? The test 01. So we do now an SSH from PowerShell. And now we have a session here. You see, we have a session connected through to that remote guy. And on that session, now we can remote commands, invoke commands, I mean, SSH commands. And uh, what we do specifically here, I'll close this guy. We j run just a Linux command, right? Hostname CTL. We set the hostname to the new uh, VM. And then we do some replacements with set. You see the set command here. We do some replacements remotely inside of a minion file to replace some stuff there. If it is Red Hat, we do some extra stuff, but it's not Red Hat. Uh, and we replace something else in the minion as well. That's for the master. That it points to the correct salt master. Then we enable the salt minion remotely on that new system. We restart the salt minion also remotely on that system with SSH from PowerShell. And then um, we do something with the password. Uh, I have the password here. In memory you see a root credential there and i echo that to set the default password there on the because in the template the password is different and i now change the root password remotely so it's confirm all my root passwords you know at home so i do that remotely as well changing the password and the linux box from powershell from windows uh and now we're done and we sleep a couple of set of seconds and then we remove that ssa session uh, from memory so it's gone I won't pause for the 10 seconds, it should be fine, yes. And now we remove the session, so it's just been disappeared now. Now we set up a new SSA session to a different uh, Linux box, and that's this guy. I don't know if I have it open, yes, that's this guy. Uh, hostname, 
you see that salt o2.home.local and we now you see salt o2.home we're remoting to that guy to approve the key and i'll show you as well uh, that if i do a salt key I now have an unaccepted key, right? This guy we just deployed is not yet accepted uh, on my uh, salt server. That needs to be approved first. And we do that here. And we're going to execute that now. We're going to set up the SA session first. Now we execute that command to approve that minion. And that's been completed. And now we remove that SSA session from memory. And the script has been completed. And I now have a freshly deployed, you see, a CentOS. VM which I can use and if I go back to salt you will see if we do another salt key that the key is now gone from the unaccepted it's now nicely green in the accepted keys okay I showed you how I deploy systems automatically at home in my lab environment um, yeah that was it thanks for watching hope to see you next video bye